What's up guys? So I know it's been a while since I uploaded any content and I apologize about that. I've just been feeling not very motivated and just you know, uninspired, but uh, I actually got some inspiration the other night playing Diablo and most of you guys know, or maybe some of you don't know, the season uh, one for Diablo just started. So a lot of people were, you know, trying new stuff out. There's been some new things that have been added. Some things got buffed. A lot of stuff got nerfed, uh, but uh, there's been some changes and, um, you know, I wanted to, you know, everyone's kind of testing things out. So I decided to play necromancer uh, i tried my first character i played a hardcore character i tried to make a uh tried to do a necromancer and i really wanted to do a summoner but summoners just weren't very good um that uh, minions were just bad <laughs> um and so um minions got buffed this season so i wanted to give it a shot and uh i, I was looking at uh, you know uh builds online and trying to find something that you know that made sense or or that worked and um None of the builds really worked. They were all kind of clunky. Uh, nothing really uh, I felt functioned well. It wasn't really smooth. And so I just decided to kind of test things out and do things on my own. And uh, I think I legit discovered the most broken Necromancer build like like that exists it's it's insane uh i mean if you I, I know there's like a ton of clickbait on on youtube i mean you can literally just search you know broken build or op build you know x class and you'll get probably hundreds of, of videos right um so there's a ton of clickbait out there but uh no clickbait no bs uh this is the strongest i've ever felt on any character i i played a sort to really high level i you know i tried all the meta builds i played dice shards i played our clash i played glacial uh, where I played um, a blizzard plus plus uh, plus ice shards. I played just straight blizzard. Uh, I had a whirlwind barb, um, and uh, nothing has felt as ridiculous as this feels. It's 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 nuts. I I had a dude add me uh, during a Helltide event. And um, we ended up running some nightmare dungeons afterwards. And uh, luckily, this the story sounds made up, right? It's hundred percent true. Uh, Kamori was actually I was streaming in Discord, and Kamori was was there watching me, so he can vouch for me. Hopefully, he comments on the video and be like, "Yeah, this is true." Um, but. Anyways, uh, this guy adds me to, to the Helltide event, and uh, you know, so we're just running around doing stuff. And, and at the end of the Helltide, I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna run some Nightmare Dungeons. You know, you want to come along?" And, uh, sh and he's like, "Sure, sure." He's like, "You mind if I bring a couple of my friends with me?" So he adds, uh, you know, t two other guys, and which are both necromancers as well. So there's literally four necromancers all running, um, you know, through, you know, going through this dungeon, right? And the one dude, I'm level. I think 64, 63 at this point. Like I'm pretty, pretty low level. Um, I actually finished the capstone dungeon solo at like level 55, right? So um, I'm definitely not supposed to be in world tier two or world tier four right now, but whatever. Anyways, so um, this other necromancer is running bone spear and he's just like, he's just kind of cocky and he's like, oh yeah, like, you know, we're, I'm going to blow through this content. Like, yeah, we're, yeah, this is only a, a, a tier 30, like we'll be fine. Um, so this dude just keeps getting wrecked, like just keeps dying over and over again. And, uh, after about the fourth time of this dude, me having to revive this guy, uh, he left, <laughs> he left. And, uh, the other, the other dude stuck around him, him, him and his buddy left. So it was just me and the one other necromancer. And he, he was like, dude, you're literally like an unkillable God. And like, I, I, I knew my build was strong, uh, but I didn't know how strong because I pretty much had just played solo. So like, I didn't really have anything to gauge it off of. I hadn't really talked to anybody about it. I just talked to like people in my discord, people in my stream. Um, and, uh, I've had a few other comments like that, and I was like, okay, I need to make a video about this and explain this. So um, we're going to jump into it. I'll explain to you guys how, kind of how it works, the meat and potatoes. So yeah, let's go. Let's roll it. What's going on, guys? So this is my necromancer. Uh, so um, kind of we'll, we'll explain um, kind of how this whole thing works. So uh, a lot of the videos or, you know, guides that you find online for these like OP builds, um, it's usually requires like a bunch of chase, you know, uniques or or rare aspects that uh, basically make the build unplayable if you don't have it or it's just like just, fuck, just hot garbage, right? So, um, you know, examples would be like Blizzard Sorg, Roland Bar, Pulverized Druid, like these builds are just not playable without the key aspects that make them a build, right? 
Um, this build is not really like that. It's um, you have kind of a, just a rolling uh, increase in power. You start off pretty powerful and you just get more and more powerful. Um, I haven't really hit a cap on when I feel like I'm not continuing to get strong. Um, I haven't hit any walls in, as far as content goes yet. So I'm only level 73. I'm, I'm hitting I'm running like nightmare tier like 40 dungeons right now, um, which is still way higher than I should be able to do at my level. So um, I, it still feels pretty good. Maybe once I get to, you know, a little bit higher level, maybe it, it'll start to feel worse. I'm not sure. But as of right now, this build is insane, right? So um, the good thing about it is you don't really need too much, right? There's uh, all the aspects that you need. You can get from the Codex of Power. So literally, as soon as you're able to, uh, you know, get into those dungeons, you can grab them right away. It's pretty quick. Um, and uh, one of the best parts about this build is that there's no essence. You don't have to manage essence. You don't, there's no resource management. Um, and uh, basically, you, you're going to become just like this absolute unit. <laughs> like you're you're super tanky through our through our aspects, through our skills and through our gems. Uh, we're going to be um, our, our bone storm is going to constantly be up, right? Uh, blood mist is constantly going to be up, so we're going to have a constant form of uh, of uh, unstoppable, right? Um, and then our minions are just going to be uh, just hitting like like trucks, and they're going to be applying vulnerable to everything, right? So we'll we'll talk about how how the whole thing works. The, we'll, we'll break it down by the build, uh, by the aspects, uh, by the cage charts that you need, um, and then we'll talk about some like build uh, some item uh, optimizations and kind of what you're looking for. Okay, so. Um, as far as the the basic build goes, so you're gonna go um, so starting skills, you're gonna start off with reap, right? So reap, you're gonna go to uh, you're gonna get acolytes reap, right? This is gonna allow us to have a corpse. Uh, in the early game, you're gonna use this to generate corpses to um, you know uh, for for uh, corpse tendrils, and if you decide to go corpse explosion early, um, you can use it for corpse explosion as well. Um, you're not going to use this too, too much once you kind of get the build rolling just because all of your other cooldowns are just so much more powerful that using a basic skill is not really worth it. But, um, you know, if you don't feel like using your cooldowns, if it's a weak enemy, you can just hit them with this and it, it'll do pretty decent damage, right? So um, that's what we'll do here. Now, you have an option here while you're leveling. Um, you can, I actually went sever to level and then I, I, I changed it later on because uh, it just felt kind of clunky, but you can use sever if you want. Um, if you just want to follow the build and just go, you know, um, uh, know that you might be a little bit weaker in the beginning and just, you know, build towards what's going to be the end, then then that's fine. Then you want to go just go to huge flesh, right? So so take uh, three points of huge flesh um, and then we're going to get um, so the point in Bo blood mist and then the points in uh, corpse explosion. We're not going to take those yet. Um, there's going to be a couple key aspects that we're going to take that are going to turn these on. So right now we're, we're just going to um, we're, we're going to leave those. We're going to take three points in skeletal mastery. Uh, we're going to take one point in Grim Harvest. Uh, we don't really care about the essence generation. We just want the fuel by death, which is just going to give us a constant damage buff, uh, which is uh, going to uh, it's we're going to be constantly exploding corpses. So this this buff is just going to be there permanently. Right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the curses. So we're going to take all of these curses right now. I know it probably when I first read these, I, I didn't think it really made sense, but I found out that these actually apply both Death's Reach and Death's Embrace actually go off of your minions, right? So um, the close enemies take 6% more damage and deal 9% less damage. This is going to apply to your skeletons, right? And your and your uh, your golem, right? So they're going to get this bonus. And then the depths reach, uh, your mages are just going to get this uh, this 12% increased damage buff, right? So, so um, these are both good. It's just straight increases, uh, just straight damage increases for your minions. Um, this is also going to increase uh, multipli multiplicative, multiplicative. Oh, I can't say that word. Um, it, it's going <laughs> to it's going to multiply it um, uh, based off of this because it's just a flat uh, percentage bonus, right? So that's we want to take three points there. We want to take three points in skeletal mage mastery. Gonna make our mages do all damage, gonna make them be a little more tanky. Um, and then we're gonna take one point in Decrepify. Um, I've got five here because of uh I've got some I've got four points in my uh in my gear, but we only want to take one point here. Our, our stat spread is very or our, our skill point spread is very thin. We don't really have any extra points to, to spare anywhere, right? So we want to uh only take one point here. Uh we're gonna we're gonna upgrade it to abhorrent. Now, this is really important. This is kind of what turns the whole build on, right? 
So, um, enemies hit with while afflicted with Decrepify have a five a 15% chance to reduce your active cooldowns by one second, right? So that counts for all the damage that you do and your minions do, right? So we're gonna have a bunch of minions, we're gonna have like 12, 12 skeletons, we're gonna have a golem, and then we're also gonna be constantly hitting with our other skills. So this is gonna constantly be, be proccing, which is going to, uh, to allow us to have that engine going, right? That's kind of how that works, right? So um, next, we want to take Corpse Tendrils. Uh, we want to take one point here. Once again, I have five points here because I'm getting four for my items, but you only need one. Uh, and then we want to take uh, the Plate Corpse Tendrils. This is going to allow us to apply Vulnerable. Um, it's going to, um, more, when we get into the Cage Charts, um, this is going to basically be constantly applying Vulnerable, which is amazing, right? So one point there. Uh, and then we want three points in Necrotic Carapace. Uh, this is amazing because this is going to give us uh, a ton of fortify. You're basically going to always be uh, full life fortified uh, pretty much constantly because you're, you and your minions are going to constantly be uh, uh, getting corpses, uh, both from the Book of the Dead and from uh, from this ability here, from uh, the Huge Flesh, right? So, so we're going to constantly be making corpses, so we're going to constantly be getting fortified, okay? Uh, next... We're gonna go um, max out Golem Mastery. So we're gonna basically max out all of the points here, right? Um, you don't have to take these in order. Um, if, if I were to choose an order, I would probably go, um, I would take Bonded, Bonded in Essence last. I would take uh, Golem Mastery last because your Golem is pretty tanky. Um, I would get this first, Death's Defense, because um, early game your minions are pretty weak um, and, it, and you don't want them to get one shot at because if they do die, um it, your damage does drop off pretty significantly so we want we want to grab this early um and then you can kind of fill these points in later but you do want to max all of these out so we want to get three in golem mastery three in inspiring leader three in hellbent commander three in bonded in essence three in death's defense and then we want to get bone storm and then upgraded bone stone bone storm okay and then finally uh our key passive is going to be shadow blight right so uh, this this year um early game it's not as crazy but it starts to get insane once we start going over kind of how um all the aspects and everything fit together as well as the the, the, the cage tarts all right So next we're going to talk about about aspects and the ones that you want to go for so um the first ones you want to get your hands on as you're leveling is you're, you're gonna want to get the blighted aspect which is right here here um so uh you deal 50 percent increased shadow damage um i'm sorry 50 percent increased damage for six seconds after shadow bite key passive damages enemies 10 times right so we want to get this um this one's pretty important you want to get this one right away on um, the second one that you're going to want to get is you're going to want to get aspect of reanimation um this is going to give us just a flat bonus uh, to our skeletons another reason why you want to tr try to keep your skeletons alive because you're going to get this damage bonus if they're alive uh for 10 seconds so um definitely want to try to keep them alive that's th that one you want to get and the next one that you want to get is you want to get um aspect of might um aspect of this obedience you can get as well but um the base roll for this is not very good so um we definitely want to have this aspect eventually but we want to get a higher rolled one uh because the the codex of power one isn't very good and doesn't really provide that much right uh, you want to get if you can get a max rolled one or close to max rolled one that's what you want to roll with okay um and then uh we want to um we want to get uh our final aspects and kind of how the whole thing is going to be laid out for our helm we're going to have um we're going to have cold bringers uh, aspect um, this is going to uh, make our skeletons, our mages, do a bunch more damage as well as uh, have another form of vulnerability and the ability to freeze enemies, right? So really, really strong. Um, next, we're going to be going for chest. Uh, we're going to get the blood mist triggers uh, corpse explosion on surrounding corpses. Um, and then uh, when blood mist detonates a corpse, it reduces the cooldown. So this is going to further um, allow our blood mist to, to come off a of cooldown quicker. I um, mean, then um, also with the Decrepify Aura, right? That's also going to decrease this cooldown as well. So this this is going to basically your blood storm is going to be, or excuse me, your, uh, your blood surge is going to constantly be up, right? So that's what we want for our for our chest, uh, for our gloves. Uh, right now I'm running Frostburn. Um, this you want to do uh, the Blood Getters aspect, the one that gives you more skeletons. Um, I wanted to try the Wrathful Heart uh, of the the Great Feast. It is not very good. 
Um, I've tested it. It doesn't really, it's either bugged or it doesn't work right. So um, I would highly recommend not using it. Um, you want to get blood, blood getters here, okay? Um, for your um, your uh, your pants, you want to get Bone Storm, uh, the Shielding Storm. Uh, this is going to allow our Bone Storm to create a barrier uh, anytime it hits. Um, so with us being able to have Bone Storm up constantly, uh, we're going to constantly have a barrier. So this is really good. Going to give you a ton of survivability. Uh, for our boots, we want the uh, vicious uh, vicious aspect, which is going to give us more mages, more mages, more damage. Um, for our wand, we want, uh, and we, you want to be using a wand here. The reason why you want to use a wand is because of the lucky hit chance, right? We unfortunately, with this build, we can't use a two-hander uh, because uh, we really need the fast, the fast attacks and also the lucky hit. The lucky hit's the biggest part of it, but the faster attacks is, is really where it's at, too. Um, so we want to put ultimate shadow here. Um, this is going to change our bone storm into shadow damage, uh, which is going to proc our key passive. Um, and it's also going to, um, it's just going to increase our damage like a ton. It's going to make us do a lot more damage with bone storm opposed to just using it as more of a survivability thing. It's going to be just a DPS machine, right? So that's what we want here, uh, for our, uh, for our, uh, amulet, we want to have uh, disobedience it's still super good. Even after the nerf. You want to try to find a, uh, uh, this one's a max rolled one, but you want to try to find one that's that's max rolled or almost max rolled uh, and put it in your amulet slot. This is really important. You want it here, right? Um, I was able to find a Ring of Minduin. I, I found a really good rolled Ring of Minduin as well, which is crazy because I've played three or four Necromancers now and I, I have never seen one drop. So to get an almost max rolled one was pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, but uh, Ring of Mindolin, once you get it, that's going to replace the um, the Ring of uh, anim uh, Reanimation. Um, that's going to replace that. And then on your uh, on your other uh, ring, you're going to want to have um, this. Right now, I've got the uh, Ring of Exposed Flesh. Not good uh, because I was trying to make this this aspect work or this uh, this cage chart. So on your other ring, you want to have Aspect of Osseous Scale. Which is going to make our bone storm just be constantly up uh, on top of the the decrepit aura as well. So kind of kind of works like that, right? So that's how that works. Um, and then um, our uh, our offhand, we're going to want to have the uh, the blighted offhand, which is going to increase uh, the damage of our shadow blight e passive, right? All right, so next we'll talk about the Book of the Dead. So for the Book of the Dead, what we want here is we want uh, Skeletal Warriors. Um, so we're going to want to get Reapers, and we want the second upgrade, which gives us a 15% chance to carve uh, to carve a corpse. So that's what we want on the, on, the, on the Skeletons. On the Mages, we want right now, I have, don't pay attention to this right here. I had this because of that that aspect, or, or I keep saying aspect, that, uh, <laughs> that cage chart. Uh, you want the second upgrade, the one that uh, uh, applies the vulnerability. Um, so that's what you want for that. You want the mages. You're going to want to swap. So in the beginning, you're going to want to start off with shadow mages until you get uh, the cold bringers aspect. Once you get the cold bringers aspect, then you want to switch to the to the cold mages because that's going to allow them to cast blizzard, which is going to make uh, their damage go through the roof. Right. So that's what you want to do there. Um, and then for your golem. You want to go Iron Golem once you're able to, and you want to go the second upgrade, which uh, lets his ability apply vulnerability, which is just going to give us another form of vulnerability, which is also, because it's an active cooldown, it's also going to be decreased by the Decrapify Aura, right? This, if Hopefully you're kind of seeing the theme here, <laughs> how this whole thing kind of ties together, right? So that's how that works. That's that, And that's the Book of the Dead. So as far as gear goes, um, there's a lot of stats that we can use, and there's a lot of stats that are good for us. Um, the ones that we really want to focus on are minion life, lucky hit, lucky hit when you have a barrier, damage reduction while fortified, just straight up damage reduction, uh, vulnerable damage, crit strike chance, and critical strike damage. Now there's other stats that are fine. Um, those are the kind of the ones that you want to go for and the ones you want to aim for. But if you look at my gear, some of the stuff like I've got um, you know, I've got all stats, uh, you know, because I everything else on it was good. Uh, control impaired is kind of kind of bad, but uh, everything else on this on this piece of armor is pretty good. Um, so you've got a lot of you've got a lot of affixes that you can play with that are good on this build. You don't need like there's not really any stats that are just completely dead. 
I mean, there are a few, but um, there's a lot of stuff we can use, right? So the break points that we want to go for, we want to shoot for, you want to shoot for around 30% critical strike chance. Uh, we want to shoot for around 50% critical strike damage bonus. Uh, we want to get around 20 to 30% vulnerable damage. Uh, if you can get a little bit higher, good. Uh, but 20 to 30 is pretty, pretty good, right? Because we're going to be constantly applying vulnerability. So we don't really need to have a super, super high number there because uh, basically everything's going to always be vulnerable, right? Um, for mini life, this is a big one that we want. We want at least 100% here. I think I have like, like 170 or something crazy like that. I've got a pretty high number there. I've got, let's see here, meaning life bonus, meaning armor. Uh, yeah, I've got 138%, right? So uh, you don't necessarily need that high. I would say at least, you probably want at least two or close to 100% because um, once you get into the higher level dungeons, uh, your minions are going to take a lot of damage. You want to make sure you keep them alive, okay? Um, so that's that's what there. For cooldown reduction, we want to get around 20 to 30%. The more the better um if you without sacrificing too many of the other stats uh more cooldown reduction just means more abilities it, you know you get the you get the drill right um and then uh for lucky hit we want to have uh close to 50 percent uh if we can get higher the better uh this is a big one this is probably one if you can sacrifice any of the other stats to get more of this that's probably what you want to do because this this uh that stat in this build is insane the higher the better uh, more lucky hit chance just means more procs on all of our stats or all of our abilities, right? So that's really what you want to go for, okay? So for our gems, we're going to use sapphires in our armor. Um, I think these are better because of necrotic carapace. Uh, we're going to be constantly fortified, so having the straight damage reduction is just better. Uh, you can use rubies if you really want to. It is going to give you a bigger barrier for your uh, for your shielding storm. I think this is just better value, though. But feel free, if you want to have the extra health, you can throw the rubies in there instead. But I think these are better. Uh, for weapons, you um, you can use, uh, you want to use emeralds. Uh, I guess a case could be made for amethyst, the one that does the damage over time. I think, I think emeralds is just better. It's better crit strike damage against vulnerable targets, and everything is always going to be vulnerable. So I feel like these are just a better value, right? But if you want to use amethyst, by all means, throw those in there instead. Uh, for hearts, we want to be using a orange, a blue, and then a wrathful slot. Where you put these at doesn't really matter. Um, you want for your wrathful heart, you want to be using the barber, the heart of the barber. Um, this is a rare heart, so you're not going to be able to get this right away. Um, some good uh, options for uh, uh, this slot until you find it are the cage heart of revenge. That's going to give us some tank tankiness. I was using that for the longest time until I found this heart. Uh, it also, um, what that does is it, it it suppresses the damage by 20%, up to 20%. And then whenever you use your Blood Mist, it's going to explode out and it does like 20k damage. It, it, it ends up adding up to be quite a bit of damage because we're going to be constantly pressing Blood Mist because of, uh, because of all the, the cooldown reduction engine that we have going, right? So that's one option. Uh, barber, what the Barber does, a Barber is when you crit an enemy, it is going to store all that damage for, for four seconds, and it's going to increase the amount of damage that you do to that target by 14% every second that is affected by this, right? So this with the Ring of Mendelin, uh, with all of our crit strike damage and vulnerable damage, this, this is insane. It, it basically makes it so where... Uh, bosses just drop like flies like you'll see like big chunks of health just like get shaved off packs die super quick all you got to do is land one crit do a bunch of damage to one enemy and then they're all going to explode it's it's amazing right that's how that works uh for our orange heart we're going to be using the sacrilegious heart the one that auto casts the corpse spells um the way that this works is it goes off of your bar so it goes from left to right so i have it prioritizing skeletons um, but you can change this if you don't want to prioritize skeletons. Uh, you can you can put your corpse uh, uh, your corpse tendrils here instead. But it goes left to right. So the way this works is if I walk over a a, a corpse and one of my skeletons is dead, it's gonna auto cast this. If not, it's gonna cast corpse tendrils. Right? This happens every second. It's it's amazing. It's a it's a ton of extra stuns, extra CC. Also allows us to resummon our skeletons without having to press the button. Um, one thing to note though is you do want to periodically press this though because it is going to increase 
the damage that your skeletons do, as well as heal them. So that is something you're going to want to do just, you know, in your rotation. But, uh, but yeah, that's how that works. Um, and then for your blue, you want to be using the Decrepify Aura. Um, the starting one is kind of bad. It's only, it's four items or four enemies, excuse me. Um, so it's not great, especially for single target fights. But um, this will go up and this eventually goes down to zero, which is the highest upgrade for it. Uh, and that is going to make it so where you constantly have Decrepify Aura up. It's amazing, right? Four is not great, but definitely usable. You would want to use that until you find a better, uh, either a two, a one, or a zero. Uh, but yeah, that's for the hearts. Um, and then lastly, for the Paragon board, um, I'm still kind of playing around with the Paragon board. Uh, I'm not 100% sure or set on what I'm doing. Um, I think my starter board and my first board are pretty much locked in. The ones I don't know about are my next boards. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do. Uh, but for our first board, what we're going to do is uh, we, we basically just path up the right. Um, our glyph we take amplify the reason why we do that is because everything is always constantly cursed so it's just a flat 10 percent uh bonus damage uh from me uh, from us and from our minions uh and then it also boosts uh these rare nodes around here or these excuse me these uh magic nodes here so pretty good gives us more damage gives us more armor pretty pretty good right um our second board we're gonna take cult leader and we're gonna basically take every single minion node on the board um, this is we want to make our minions as strong as possible because this is a mini build So we want to make sure that they're super tanky You want to try to grab cult leader as soon as possible as I mean I would almost say you want a path towards this right away because this is a huge damage increase It's basically 45% damage uh, increase to your minions massive increase, right? And then just take all these little nodes as you can um, and then I, I I pathed up to the top. I guess you could probably path to the left if you wanted to, or path to the right. I felt like this was the most, uh, this made the most sense. Um, our next board, so I tried Wither. Didn't really care for Wither. Um, I decided to go with the uh, the Corpse Explosion one, the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the, the Flesh Eater, because we're constantly exploding corpses with our Corpse Explosion, uh, the, with the Blood Mist aspect. Uh, with our corpse tendrils that does count as consuming the corpse even though you're not technically consuming the corpse It does trigger this I, I tested it um, So this is giving us just a flat 40% damage bonus. It's huge. It's awesome, right? So that's that um, and then and then um, I don't think I really need any, any of this other stuff I might take I might take these nodes over here uh, Just to get the ex, uh, extra damage against elites. We don't really need the attack speed because we don't really basic basic attack very often Um I don't think maybe you want to get poison resist. I'm not, I don't really know. Um, crit strike damage we probably want to take. Injured enemies. We don't really ever do damage to injured enemies. Stuff usually just dies. It goes usually from full to dead or or almost almost full to dead. So um, I don't think that damage to injured enemies is really worth it. But um, I think the crit strike damage. There was one node here. Um, like this is probably pretty good. Um, this is probably pretty good, even though it is 50% damage to, to injured enemies. Is It is a 15% uh, increase to critical strike damage, which uh, this whole build kind of functions on that. So um, I think that's worth it. Uh, the next the next glyph or the next uh, board I'll probably take is Wither. Or maybe I'll do like, uh, maybe I'll do Bone Graft. I'm not really sure. If anyone's got any suggestions in the comments on the next route to go or what do you suggest... I'm all I'm open ears, but, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the build. I'm all in the build with uh, with just some clips of some gameplay, so you can see kind of how this works and how ridiculous it is. Uh, and and I stream uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday around 9 8, 9 p.m. Eastern time. So definitely come swing by the stream if you have some questions and want to come hang out. All right, guys. Well, have a good day. Thanks for thanks for checking it out. And if you did enjoy the video, please make sure to give a, a thumbs up and a like and uh, subscribe and all that all that fun stuff. All right, peace. Find myself wondering what did happen to the last ten. I ran away with my life, fast forward, never turn back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true. I'm just as surprised as you. Eleven.
Life changes just open the door. One thing certain, I'll always be your. Yeah. 